It's time for the Locals Only Podcast with Dixon. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's another edition of the Locals Only Podcast for 95X, brought to you by the Syracuse Haulers. And joining me this week, a couple of very old friends, Greg and Dan of the legendary Flashing Astonishers. Gentlemen. Hello, Hello sir. Salutations. Hello. Greetings. Everything uh, is going very good. Thanks for having us on, man. I appreciate this. It's been a long time since I've seen either of you in person. Uh, and it's not just like a COVID thing. It's just been a while. Um, yeah, it's just life, you know. Get a little yeah. older, you got jobs and kids and it's in the way and car payments and everything else, you know, and we're not playing as many shows as we used to. And and uh so when we do, we try to make it special and call all of our old school friends and say, Hey, what's up? Come on, uh, come on out, you know. <laughs> I adore it, man. So yeah. when I played the new single porches, which you can hear Sunday nights on locals only on 95X. Uh, I introduced it with a story that I'm going to retell now because I think, <laughs> oh, no, uh -oh. <laughs> no, it, 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 no, like I remember the exact first time you guys played as the Flashing Astonishers for me at Stylene's. It was a Sunday night. Probably uh, 1995. Was, oh my God. Ish. Probably, probably 96. Cause it would have been, yeah. it was, winter. yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, I was, I was, a, 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 I drank a lot back then. So I was not always in the, uh, yeah. Never stopped. <laughs> we were in the Sorry. Spirit. Never stopped. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I, I was half in the bag. You guys were in that deadliner spot of last. And I remember introducing you guys as the astonishing flashers. And to this day, <laughs> to this I day, that. I, I still hear about it every single time I see Sean. Every time. <laughs> and he called me Steve for about three years because of that. So we uh, we start. Uh, we've heard journey. a lot of other ones like, you know, flushing astronomers and flaccid astronomers. Yeah, you know. <laughs> that would also make a great band name, though. Mm. <laughs> um, for those of you that are that are new to the scene or have been away for a while, um, these guys have been putting records out since the mid to late nineties, right? Like uh, the three that I consider to be uh, classic, I think are the, the official releases. Uh, Everything is going to stop, which Greg actually put out on his own Koala syndicate records uh, mm -hmm. back in 97, eight, 98, 98, 98. Yep. Um, the star off machine, which is still one of my favorite records uh, to date, which is another one of your releases. That was the next year. Yeah, that was 99. And then there was a little bit of a break before the third one. On Involuntary Bliss. Off to. Right, yep. And that one actually had, like, distribution. You could get it at Walmart if you wanted to, you know, and, huh. and all over the place. It had, like, a good label putting it out, New Red Archives, uh, affiliated substandard records. They put out, like, Reagan Youth and UK Subs and Sam I Am and stuff like that. So kind of tied into there with those bands made us feel really good at the time, you know? And then we promptly broke up like the next year after that. So that was really smart. <laughs> but there's been comebacks. And yeah. I, I so yeah, like, we hated each other. Yeah, <laughs> Just for a little while, you just know, just for a little while. And uh, <laughs> then 2010, we got back together and we've done a couple of EPs and we have, as of right now, that we're in the second time of recording two albums. <laughs> yeah. right. We, um, we had some issues with, uh, recording it the first time around and uh, we were doing it out of uh, our normal wheelhouse uh, which is Jocko and more sound uh, we've done a couple well originally we, we recorded those early albums with uh, Doug White out in uh, the Buffalo area with uh, you know Watchman Studios always did a great job you know but you know we don't want to drive that much you know we're, driving sucks so we you know we're, we're here and Jocko is amazing uh, more sound Jocko he's done pretty much everybody he does bands from all over the place he's great you know and his studio has a lot of good people working for them so we got like two albums done now basically about 85 percent you know we're we're working on it and uh two of the songs you have that you've been playing yeah. so porches is a regular uh the new one which I can't pull the name of off the top of my head uh, we'll, we'll see the light of day probably one, early uh, September. Is, what is it? Uh, Holy Christ. Oh, Holy Christ. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So that'll be the, the follow-up to Porches, 
uh, for the remainder of 2022, probably once we get to the fair time. I like to let things breathe a little bit. Um, yeah, nice. Thank you for playing it. Dude, no thanks necessary. Here's what I'm going to say, man. Like, in, in 100% honesty, I don't know that I got what you were doing in 97, 98, right? Like, you I. You and think, a lot of people. <laughs> well, it, it, it's weird to me, right? Because it wasn't probably until like the era of Hellfest, Bridge Street Music Hall, like 2001, 2002, mm. 2003, where like it all started to like really click for me, right? Like, I don't know what it was. I think I was in a musical funk at the time, right? Like the, the world and like the everything was sort of like, not in an artistic space it was in a very commercial space and i knew what your influences were and i don't necessarily know that i at the time appreciated them either but as as time progressed from like the early 2000s to when you guys got back together in 2010 i found myself like a genuine fan of the earlier albums because at Sweet. that point thank you i had been exposed to so much other stuff and through like opening my my musical mind up a little bit and stopping and understanding different aspects of things, uh, it was very clear that you guys were a solid twenty years before your time. Like in Syracuse, for, for any, real in no, Syracuse, I, anyways. I Syracuse, maybe. <laughs> even, even as far as the industry is concerned, it wasn't in at least until the late two thousands where bands of a certain ilk, whether it was metric or silver sun or the yeah yeah yeahs who took yeah. influence from the college rock era of alternative yeah. music and started putting it into theirs you guys were so far ahead of that curve with using influence from my bloody valentine and ride and all of these other amazing bands mm -hmm. that when you guys started were still relatively unknown yeah, and especially around through. like around here, you know, it's a lot of like heavier bands. I mean, I'm nothing against anybody when I say this, but it's just it's um a different scene generally around Syracuse. There's been all you know the legendary hardcore scene, which is you know wonderful. It's awesome. That's how I got into music, honestly. You know, and then I just kind of mellowed out, and uh, like the Sebado song, you know, give me indie rock. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like the lyrics in the song, it's like you know st started smoking weed and hardcore didn't sound so good anymore because it was too fast and so everything's. You know, a little more mellowed out, you know, and <laughs> but you know, just through <laughs> doing through doing all the magazines and zines and like you know, paying attention to what's going on outside of Syracuse, uh, we both found a lot of of good stuff and like you know, the stuff that got played once a week on MTV on like 120 minutes at two o'clock in the morning, <laughs> you know, those are the things that like you know we gravitated towards. You know, a lot of British bands, a lot of like you know underground bands from boston and you know like the swirlies like we played a show with the swirlies now it's like they're like super legendary to a, a whole group of people and we played at hungry charlie's with them with For six like, people yeah there was like <laughs> six people there <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean and they're like when you mentioned shoegazer bands like my bloody valentine and ride those are the british bands that kind of started that whole thing and then american bands the first ones they name are swirlies. the swirlies and the lilies too you know so i mean that's where we were growing up back in the early you know 90s and whatnot you know what i mean and and we just tried to i mean i made a lot of mixtapes so i, I think I, I tried to turn some people onto it but <laughs> well you were the king of that man you were you were making yeah. compilations with other regional and local artists mm -hmm. uh you were you were going so far and above beyond like almost anybody else I knew at the time to, to spread sort of the gospel of and what you believe in. And, and yeah, I'm trying too, to, man. It, it, yeah. It, it's amazing to me uh, thinking back to like that specific time period because like ultimately it feels like it wasn't that long ago. But oh my God, I know. Time, it was <laughs> oh my forever God. ago, right? Like, yeah. And, uh, I know, you know, we, we all grow a little bit older and, uh, you know, perspective is everything. Um, but man, there are times that I wish that we had the things at our disposal that people that are our age that we were, at, you know, like the, the, the mm -hmm. 20 somethings. Like, I would love to be able to just click on my phone and be like, yeah, that was that Sunday night. I wish I remembered that the Astonishers mm -hmm. played with Mandate of Heaven and 
oh. friggin' savages. It's stylings, right? Like <laughs> we were just talking like, about. I can do that. Yeah, I, I, I can do that at any point from like 2014 forward, right? Because there's always some drunk person's cell phone video of their mm -hmm. nephew's band that they uploaded to YouTube, right? So like I can go relive like recent memories pretty well, right? Um, but yeah. like, man, the, the bummer for me is like all the stuff that I unfortunately uh poisoned my memory with with booze and drugs and i don't remember a lot of stuff like that's the stuff i wish i had <laughs> video footage of to go back and relive because there was so much of it that like i i really regret not being in the moment like yeah like, i hear you on there, the other hand sure. uh because i was so you know um intoxicated uh so very often as so many of us know um and there's uh, we all have dumb stories about me being you know, dumb and drunk here and there and everywhere. Uh, especially you two probably have some good ones. <laughs> <Awesome. laughs> Stuff that I don't remember at all. Um, I'm really happy that everybody didn't have cell phones because my history is wiped clean. It never happened until you guys talk about it. <laughs> True enough. So. I mean, it, it, I, th I think the most like, well, at least you're not like Josh from the fiascos, right? Where like you got tossed out of the bar and it made the freaking new times. <laughs> Like, do we, we all remember that, right? Like, cheers. <laughs> over the railing and I tossed it out and then yeah. wrote about it in the new times. Cause like, uh, it was like, all that said, I, I still feel that is, uh, um, as crazy as Josh Loomis is, I'll hell you because he wrote some fucking awesome songs. Can I swear on this? I don't yeah, know. I don't care. I'll okay, I'll, cool. I'll put a not safe for work warning on it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Put a beep. I like the beeping noise. They're, they're more, yeah, but anyways, yeah, Josh, Josh wrote some awesome songs, you know? Well, here's the thing, man. Like, I'll give him props. Same, same token, right? Like, I don't know that Josh and I would ever be friends in any life, in any state of mind, right? But mm -hmm. I, I have, in my in my now older age, a genuine appreciation for the kid. He's mm -hmm. not a kid. He's our age. I mean, like, oh, yeah, totally. Um, you know, I, I think that based on my bad personal relationship with him over mm -hmm. dealing with dumb stuff, uh, scene drama, show <laughs> so drama, whatever does. it was, right? Like, yep. um, I just, I, I, I had an unrecognized bias against pretty much anything he did. And mm -hmm. it's, and it's weird because I think the reason that I loved the mandate of heaven as much as I did the minute I saw them was because it was the same guys as Josh's band, but it wasn't Josh's stuff. Right. Like, I think, I think I, I think I was a spiteful fan of a mandate of heaven. And thankfully like that band's always been genius. Greg's. Super yeah. Great. Super level. great. Greg's uh, super honestly, genius. like if I ever come into money, I'm going to put all of his albums out with like advertising everywhere and turn him into the fucking rock star that he belongs. Yeah. Like all 30 of his records. Seriously. He he's always been like, you know, inspirational, you know, I remember sitting with a bunch of beers around a table like kind of showing them like, you know, how to self make your own uh, CDs, you know, like the, with the uh, on no evil star, you know, we were putting those together and cause I'd already done a couple of those at that point and he hadn't done one yet, you know, and I'm like, dude, let's do this, you know, let's, let's get it together. And uh, yeah, I just, I wish I was as good of a guitar player as him. That's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, we he, all do. I mean, most of those mandate records, it's just him on every instrument. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. You know, yeah, like I, I, I totally when I, I did a couple of solo albums of my own and I tried to replicate that, but it was nowhere near as good. <laughs> well, I remember I remember a long time ago, like in uh, like a sober moment of reflection where I spent an afternoon with Greg uh, and a mutual friend of ours. Uh, and he was he would just explained to me how he would make those records. He could track it to four. And then I dump two of those channels down and then I have two more channels. And then I dump that down left and right. So now there's six things and then I have two more. And then the way he explained it to me, it just all made sense. Yeah, doing it like on yeah. a four track you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That like, was, that's that how the Beatles were his first few yeah. rounds. Uh, but, yeah. you know, uh, again, I, I would love, man, at some point we've got to do like, uh, like a Sunday night showcase reunion and figure out a way to get you guys in a mandate set and maybe get like this afternoon together for a night. That would be oh, great. That would be awesome. Right. Be and, and just like, yeah. we can all just I would be happy with Exploding Flowers because that record that those guys did together, Josh and, and, and all of those. So guys, good. Oh my God. So good. Holy cow. Well, it, holy, it's really cool. Criggity. Holy cow. Holy criggity. By <laughs> yeah. It is for the first time. Like it shows uh, Jesse and Tony off in a way because 
those are the guys that wrote the songs for that record. I know Darian contributed as well, but usually in the projects, the three of them were in together. Darian was the primary songwriter. Right. It, it was Definitely cool Darian. to see Jesse and, and Tony have their moment because both of them had done stuff in the past, right? Like uh, Tony had a little band called Recovery Room that mm -hmm. played one show that I've still never gotten over. Like it was just one, like one of those moments I'll never forget. So being able to hear, you know, his point of view with that group of guys was great. So good. Um, you know, but we'll do an early show because I know we all probably go to bed a little earlier. <laughs> right? like, That'd be fun. It won't, it won't fun. be. Can you believe that? Like the early days, it was doors at nine. Yeah. Show at ten on a <laughs> Sunday, the and we would get three hundred to six hundred people to come out. Oh, on the right. Yeah. Room. I don't even leave my house so good. Lock now. No, so good. I mean, I'm at work like really early, and I know Dan is too. And yeah. I mean, I'm in if I'm in bed at eight o'clock, it's not a weird night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm probably I'm probably the outlier because I've had insomnia for the better part of my adult life. So like mm -hmm. I'm up all hours of the night, but like I know how my contemporaries roll. And my wife is uh, a little more than a decade younger than me and she's already in bed it's not even nine so like this is my life i spend four or five hours a night just like being able to do stuff like this reconnect with old friends um listen to music hanging out with your cat done. <laughs> oh yeah dude that's, well it's a nice cat i do a yeah. pet segment on wednesdays so it was appropriate that i got something that, that spoke to like the other things i do that aren't music related in the video world which is pets and food so there's a taco. Oh, sweet. Pizza. Pizza, taco, mm. kitties. And thankfully, the dog hasn't barked yet. He usually likes to make an appearance at some point. 100-pound <laughs> crazy bastard. Um, so, yeah, uh, the Flashing Astonishers officially back. More music before the end of 2022. New single around the time of the fair. Porches in the interim. And a show this Friday night. Friday night, yeah. August 6th. This Friday Monday night. Waffles. Um I'm excited. This is for next week, Dan. Uh, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so yeah, tomorrow night. Wait, is it Friday? <laughs> tomorrow night, Funk and Waffles, Armory Square, the Flashing Astonishers, our friends, the underwater bosses, and their new friends, the brand new Luddites. It's 10 bucks. Uh, I believe it's like an it's an all ages show, right? Like Funk is always, they serve food. They have to let you in. I would think so. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's 18 up. Yeah. I don't know. Just Where? because it's a bar. I don't know. We should all carry ID at this point in our lives yeah, anyway. So just bring your know. ID with you. And 100%. if they give you a hard time at the door, order a waffle and then slowly eat it while watching the three bands play and they can't. Make it <laughs> hey, just stand on the sidewalk. We'll be loud enough. It's not that big of a place. Yeah. You, you can go. hear us on the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah, it'll be great. Uh, I, I wish I could make it. Uh, Friday, unfortunately, they have me elsewhere. Otherwise, I would. Wait. But Hold on. The 6th is a Saturday. Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. It is a Saturday. Yes. See, Dan said Friday, and that threw me all off. Oh, right? no. It's, yep, it's a, it's a Saturday the 6th. Me? So now you have no excuses there, Mr. Dixon. I, I, I can come. <laughs> I can come now. Hey, come on uh, so down. Yeah, Saturday, August 6th, 10 bucks. I will probably be there, uh, hey. as will the underwater bosses. Brand, night, brand new Ludites. Yes, the... the they are from uh, Vermont. They're a pretty straight up like punk rock band. It, this is a total mixed genre show, and I really love that kind of stuff. You know, I like uh, you know they're like kind of a just a lot of downstrokes punk rock songs about you know punk rock things. <laughs> and underwater bosses are just total like instrumental surf stuff. And then you got us just doing loud indie rock stuff. You know, and I, it's just three different bands. It's more fun that way. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's always been my theory about putting shows together, right? Is to cross pollinate as much as possible when, mm -hmm. whenever possible, right? Because like, I know that a lot of people over the course of the almost 30 years that I've been doing stuff, they've always kind of questioned my methods. But in the end, like, it, I, I think it's worked out, right? Because like, I don't know that a lot of us would have the friends we have in the music scene mm -hmm. and we not cross pollinated to a degree, right? Because- Our drummer's Tony Stornaby. Right, like from a multitude of yeah. old school hardcore bands. Yeah, um, he was in like all these straight edge hardcore bands for years, like Beta Minus Mechanic, touring all over the freaking yeah. place, you know, and and uh, what, another victim, I think. 
two, no, right? Was he, was, was, he, was he in that one? I don't remember. I don't think he was. Uh, he was in the funeral. Was. The funeral yeah, is, funeral is, is definitely probably the funeral. most recent the, thing that people would know. The night night owls too. Yeah, a little night more owls, which with, were amazing. Uh, yeah. yeah, the night Grant night Johnson. owls were amazing with Grant Johnson. And, and, you know, so oh, good, so good, so good. Excuse me, but uh, there, there's a million amazing bands from Syracuse that never got there so too, good. from every era. I mean, and we could probably sit here and rattle off at least a hundred of them easily. Oh yeah. Um, but what what gives me pause is the fact that like you guys persevered through all this, man. Like that's an accomplishment yeah. in, in my eyes, right? Like because there are very few, like we celebrated the fact that Onika had had endured the length of the ten years that locals only has been on ninety five X, right? Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. taking nothing away from them because a consecutive decade as a band is that's, oh yeah, that's amazing. definitely yeah. It's like having three or four wives, basically, oh, or boyfriends, whatever. <laughs> We're open-minded here. So, um, but what it boils down to... I've had girlfriends that, accuse me of sleeping with him just because we had band practice. Right? I'm like, come on. <laughs> For real. <laughs> it's kind of hard, right? Like, I mean, look how, we how didn't. good Dan looks. No, we, we did. Okay. Just hey, on uh, the record. Unless no I was judgment. blacked out. No judgment here. Unless I was blacked out. If I was blacked out, I don't know. If I was going. blacked out, I could have been blacked out. <laughs> but, you know, 1997 to 2022, and granted, there were some off periods there, um, but to, to still have it the way you guys do. Because, like, and, and I'll, I'll say this, I, mean, I put porches on, and there's an unmistakable flashing astonisher sound, at least in, in my mind, in my ears, right? Like, yeah. um, and it's it's not, and a, and a lot of people uh, say that the, the most unique thing about the Flashing Astonishers is Dan's vocal approach, right? Hey. And I, 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 and again, like I think you have a very cool thing in a way that, like, for me, the unique thing is the tone, right? Like, there's there's a certain way the the guitars in the flashing astonishers sound from the opening note. Like when you, you've had songs that lead with like little bits of feedback or like noise. And even those have a very characteristic flashing astonishers sound. Yeah. And I don't know that there are very many acts period, not even Syracuse, but it's acts period in, in the world of musicians that can say that. Uh, yeah. and, and to me, that's what makes what you guys do so special. Um, and, and I think the fact that like you guys are so persistent and genuinely don't care about anything other than what you want to do. Right. Like I, I love, yeah. <laughs> I, I really like in hindsight, really appreciate how much you guys genuinely did this for you. Right. Like 100%. there was, there was a distinct disconnect i think between you guys and me in the early days because i was a club promoter and i was just trying to sell tickets and help bands draw Mm -hmm. more people and like you guys were staunchly the flashing astonishers doing it your way and we would always have conversations and i i I didn't get it and man i wish i had at the time i I wish i had you know don't shortchange it because at the same time you definitely helped us out a lot back in the day amazing so much you helped us out with a lot of shows you put us on with popular bands often so much you know i mean like we played with like guided by voices and not a surf because of you baby (laughs) you know what i mean and was that yeah h2o H2O. H2O. (laughs) I, I don't think it's true. Well, did you do that H2O Saves the Day show? I don't know. Or was that Dunn? Oh, that was, was that Dunn? That was Matt Dunn. That was oh, Dunn, okay. yeah. That yeah, was yeah. Matt Dunn. Um, but, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously I liked you guys, right? Because you were always at the bar. You were supporting other bands. Every day. <laughs> you know, you would turn me on to other things that were happening in the scene that I might have been blind to, right? Like, you, you guys were great in that. Uh, you were very supportive. So, like, when you work hard and you're super supportive, then I always go above and beyond to reward those people with the things that I think that you deserve. Like, I knew that you were both huge Guided by Voices fans. Mm -hmm. The manager told me that I couldn't put a local opener on it because they wouldn't share the stage. And I was like, well, I got two stages, right? Like, so if I close the main room and I put the local, 
out in the lounge on the lounge stage, <laughs> I can do it. Right. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, cool. And I immediately called you and said, dude, we're, we're, we're having you open for guided by horse. Um, that was amazing. Know, because you guys went above and beyond to promote yourselves in the bar and the scene and the other band. So like it, it's reciprocal. My, my biggest thing that I'm upset with myself for is not appreciating you guys artistically for what you were doing at the time. Right. Like well, I always, I always had sort of compartmentalized you as like, yeah, they're, they're, they're it's the astonishers. They're going to do what the astonishers do. Right. And then if I get a cool band that they mention that they like, I'll put them on it. Right. Like, <laughs> the, you know, like, or you would hit me up and be like, Hey, this band from North Carolina wants to come and play with the astonishers. Can we put something together? And the answer is always yes. Right. Like I just wish that at the time, like I could have sat down with the star off machine when it came out and geeked out to it the way I did like three or four weeks ago when you sent me the new stuff and I felt compelled to go back and listen to it. Nice. Nice. You know, like, well, you know what though? I mean, it's that it is what it is, but also a lot of, I feel like a lot of people didn't really like get it around here. I mean, cause we would go and we would play shows like up and down the coast. We'd go to New Jersey and a lot of shows, people in New Jersey, would be there more people would show up for us in like new brunswick than for syracuse shows mm -hmm. you know we go play in jersey city and it would be an awesome show and then we come back and play in our own hometown with our friends around we couldn't even get half of our friends to come out because you know but it is what it is you know but that's not all the time we had yeah. a lot of great shows here a lot of great years. shows you know we had tons of great shows i'm not saying anything bad about syracuse you know but just it seemed like sometimes the greater syracuse area would be like yeah, well, whatever. You know. <laughs> We're gonna go watch journey covers in a field without yeah, a yeah. Like, <laughs> disco covers. Yeah, go, go oh, to disco show. Now we're really dating ourselves. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, sorry, guys, sorry I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for the third rise of disco. Yeah, it'll, it's gonna come. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, I think it did a little bit with CKY because if you go back and listen to those records, Jess plays all of them in that disco beat with the open hi-hat, I think that was disco's last stand. <sighs> well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of surf bands in Syracuse again. You know, Salinas. The, the Salinas. And underwater underwater bosses. Underwater bosses. Yeah. And, and, you know? Anything that John Sorber does is just going to be good. I, that's by the way, 100%. That's, yeah, by 100%. the way, we beat everybody to that too because before we were doing the Astonishers, we were doing, if you Numbers. remember, a surf band called the Mildreds in 1993, 1994, copying us now 30 years later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, there was, there was one old Mildreds tune that I loved, and I beat it into the ground. Uh, I want to say it was like, I, I, I'm going to say it Riptide, but it's not Riptide. Oh, Riptide, yeah, yeah, yeah it could is be that Riptide. It? Riptide was a yeah. smoker, yeah. That yeah, was that was a smoker. Yeah. I, did, I just remember, like, that. I think you guys opened with that the first time I ever saw the band, and I was just, like, immediately just head over heels in love. That, that was a fun band because we were all so young, and we were into, like, Sonic Youth, and the singer was really into surf rock and got us into surf rock that we didn't ever really pay attention to. Like, you know, the trash band and garage rock and stuff like that from the 60s. And stuff that stuck with me to this day. Like, I love the Sonics. I love, like, the creation mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Now, now it's... Yeah. And I thank Ian Purdy for that, you know? Yeah. And it's awesome. That's it, though. <laughs> <laughs> and then... <laughs> But the thing is, it was funny with that band. If you listen to it now, there's some videos on YouTube and whatnot from like VHS tapes. We would go to gas stations and there'd be these little packets, these little green packets of like ephedrine, basically trucker I speed. Go. I gotta go. It's totally like illegal, I think now, or they just don't sell it in gas stations anyways. But yeah, the little packets of ephedrine, they were like a dollar or a couple dollars or something. And we would just load up on that and cigarettes and Mountain Dew, and then play like, like speed metal surf. <laughs> and it's just ridiculous. I don't know. It was great, man. It was great. It's, it's, um, well, since, uh, since Zoom is uh, a free thing in my world, we have to cut mm -hmm. this a little bit short because we're running out of the free time for Zoom. Gotcha. Thanks, Zoom. Uh, but I would like to thank you uh, once again for taking the time. And uh, in doing this, because it, it's been a long time in coming, the fact that I've had this podcast for a few years now, and this is the first time we're doing it, 
Uh, yeah, we've been my, laying low, man. <laughs> it's got my brain going in uh, idea mode. So I'm probably going to hit you up about some stuff. But in the meantime, I will see you Saturday night, which is the Thank 6th you. of Come August. Come on out. Funkin' Waffles, uh, Underwater Bosses, brand new Luddites, and the legendary Flashing Astonishers. Uh, make sure you follow these guys across social media. And I assume the singles are out across all the streaming platforms, right? Um, No. Yeah, no. no. no we, we're... I don't any know. new stuff we, we gotta talk about it we haven't figured it out yet I don't know. no <laughs> right, well, you're, the, go, only one you're the only one that has our stuff okay go go check out the back catalog for now yeah i'm Bandcamp, and yeah. uh basically everywhere but Bandcamp, spotify everything else you know yep very cool and then yep. we will uh we will debut that new single right around the time of the new york state fair and man i'm feeling nostalgic so we might just have to do something before the end of the year together we'll collaborate hey, anytime, that sounds great anytime you want to talk too down we'll do your show totally <laughs> well we'll do this again we'll do this again and we'll flip flop we'll put we'll put you guys in opposite chairs and dan will talk most of the time and then you throw the one-liners in oh it's gonna okay. be weird it's gonna be crazy <laughs> sounds good we'll flip the script gentlemen thank you so much greg and dan thank of you the Flash thank you astonishers uh Cheers. this is the locals only podcast for 95x brought to you by syracuse haulers olay syracuse haulers <laughs>